Good morning and welcome back to the 200th of our 365 Bible studies. We are now moving into the realm of apocalypses. Now, apocalypses started being written down a long time ago, right back in the time of Ezekiel, and we're going to go back to him today. Um, and here is his little proto-apocalypse in Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 14 to 23. This is what Ezekiel wrote. So it was that my sovereign Yahweh sent me to Gog. He sent me with this personal message. My people Israel think they are secure. I want you to set out from where you are in the deep north. I want you to take a large international mounted force to attack my people Israel, like a storm crossing the land. When that time arrives, I'll send you to invade my land to prove who I am to the nations. By you, I intend to show my holiness to the nations. I was talking about you long ago when I proclaimed by my servants the prophets of Israel that a time was coming when I would bring somebody to attack Israel. Yahweh the Sovereign has spoken. Yahweh the Sovereign speaks. You will realise how furious I am on the day when Gog invades Israel. I am telling you that I will be so angry that there will be a severe earthquake in Israel. Every living thing will tremble with fear. All the fish and birds, the animals large and small, and all the humans on the surface of the earth. The mountains will fall, the cliffs will crumble, all the walls will collapse. I will also terrify Gog with all sorts of disasters. I, Yahweh, the Sovereign, have spoken. His soldiers will fight amongst themselves with swords. I'll punish him with disease and bloodshed. Rain and hail will fall in torrents on him and his troops and on his allies, and fire and burning brimstone will also fall on them. That's how I will show the nations how great and holy I am. They will know that I am Yahweh. Long before the days of big apocalypses, there first appeared mini apocalypses like this one, which appeared in the latter days of the Babylon exile. Ezekiel tried many different genres in his attempts to get his message across to the exiles. He would use parables, visionary and prophetic writings, political and military criticism, censure of the false wisdom of some so-called prophets, and lofty descriptions of the good and splendid days that would eventually come. Now here, for a couple of chapters, he is trying his hand at a new genre, the apocalypse. Nobody knows for sure who Gog was meant to be, or where his country, Magog, was. It is possible, given when he was writing, that this was just a simple way of referring to Babylon and its rulers and the punishment, a description of its downfall. These two chapters do rather interrupt the flow of Ezekiel's book. They may well have been written after the rise of Persia and her defeat of Babylon, and later inserted into the text by those who collected and edited Ezekiel's writings. The point of this mini-apocalypse was surely to restate Ezekiel's conviction that as in one's personal and national life, so now in international affairs, Yahweh remained sovereign. He sent the coalition of foreign armies against complacent Israel explicitly to prove he was in charge. The beginning of chapter 39 describes the downfall of Gog, the massacre of his troops, and their fate to become food 
for the wild animals. And then at the end of that chapter, Ezekiel wrote about the restoration of the kingdom. You might like to look up chapter 39 from the second half of verse 27 to verse 29, which has echoes in many a future apocalypse, as we shall see. What he says is, I want to bring all my people back from each of those countries where their enemies live. They will at last understand that I, Yahweh, am their God. They will have learnt this because it was by my command that they went into captivity and now it is by my will that I gather them together and bring them home to their own country. I will not leave a single one behind. I will pour out my spirit on the people of Israel. I will not turn away from them ever again. I am Yahweh. I am sovereign. I have spoken. Well, that's um, that was Ezekiel. From around the same period, we have Isaiah. Isaiah too contains a mini apocalypse, and we'll read that tomorrow, and I'll see you then.